Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is an absolutely amazing game, and I would go as far to say it's better than the prequel. Hours upon hours of non-stop fun on top of an awesome story with some of the best turn-based combat in recent times. Now before we begin, pre-warning, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. This video will be riddled with tons of spoilers. Spoilers so big they will be felt across numerous Yakuza and Like a Dragon games. So, you've been warned. Hey, just how long is this gonna take? So, there is a total of 65 trophies, and there are no missables. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. Giving me the freedom to play the game at my own pace. Of course, the kicker in the teeth when Infinite Wealth was released was that there was New Game Plus locked behind DLC that you had to pay for. But it's not needed for the Platinum, only if you want to get the 100%. So let's get straight into it. Okay, let's go. So Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth picks up after the events of the prequel and everybody's favourite hero, Ichiban Kasuga, is working at Hello Work. He's there purely to try and find honest jobs and work for ex Yakuza since the Great Desolution. After a short section going over the events of the previous game and Ichiban's reasons for trying to help out all the ex Yakuza, we then meet up with a couple of familiar faces. Damn, that's bad. While in the bar, Namba and Adachi speak with Ichiban about how they know he's in love with Saiko and egg him on to ask her out. He eventually works up the courage and she says yes and his reaction reminds me of when I first got to 100 subscribers. Ichiban then seeks dating advice from Namba and Adachi and how he should approach the whole situation. Eventually, he ends up just being himself, which works perfectly fine right up until the very end of the date. Will you marry me? As you can imagine, that didn't go down too well with Sachan, and she pretty much just walks away without a real answer. This leads to Sachan no longer being in the party for the foreseeable future. Ichiban retreats back to Namba and Adachi and tells them everything, and they point out where he went wrong. The next morning, Ichiban goes to work and pretty much gets fired. He's then approached by a bunch of dweebs with footage from a popular VTuber. The footage showed Ichiban in a really negative light, the real reason why he was dismissed. After a few back and forths, it's time to fight, and Ichiban does what he knows best, and kicks some ass. Ichiban then finds out that both Namba and Adachi have also been fired from their jobs as they were also covered in the VTubers footage. So all three are back to where they started, rock bottom. They hear that the Seriyu clan has begun taking in ex Yakuza and they all go to check out who is pulling the strings and what is the motive. They head to Seriyu clan HQ and have a very warm welcome before finally meeting up with the leader. We are told that the Seriyu clan is not our enemy and they are giving honest work to the ex Yakuza. We are then introduced to another familiar face, Joe Sarashiro. This is the end of chapter one and also our first trophy, back in action. 
Sarashiro then asks Ichiban to meet up somewhere private, away from eyes and ears. Ichiban agrees and there is a really, really long story piece all about Ichi's mom, who he has never met. How his old Yakuza boss was actually his real dad, and the whole story of how he got switched as a baby. If you've played the prequel, you'll know all about this. He then goes on to tell Ichiban that Ishii is still alive, even though he was the one that originally told everybody that she was dead. Ichiban's mum, his name is Akane, and she's living in Hawaii, and Ichiban is asked to go and meet her. Ichiban then flies to Hawaii, and has his cabbie try and rob him, but gets the upper hand. Luckily, E.G., a guy who's in a wheelchair who we'd met briefly on the plane, happened to be nearby and stops us from getting arrested once the cop showed up. We go back to E.G.'s house, and as Ichiban has lost his letter with his mum's address on, the cabbie and the clan he's part of show up and all hell breaks loose. We win the fight and flee the scene, heading straight for Akani's house. Ichiban knocks the door and after a short pause is welcomed in. He turns the handle and the chapter ends with another trophy, fish out of water. Chapter 3 begins with Ichiban being interrogated in the police station as he recaps what happened after he walked into his mom's house. He tells the officer how he was greeted by Chitose, who claimed to be Akane's maid, and after some food and beers, she drugged him, and then he woke up naked on the beach. That was when and why he was arrested. Ichiban gets fed up with the cop's bullshit because he's quite frankly a bit of a knob and manages to escape while still handcuffed. He runs away until he bumps into a very familiar and welcome face who helps him get out of the cuffs. Long time no see, Kasuga. Ichiban and Kiryu head back to the bar to lay low for the night, before trying again the day after. This is where the game begins to give us the freedom to do some side bits, and the first thing we find is Mismatch. Mismatch is basically online dating where Ichiban has to set his profile up and tries to answer questions in order to achieve a high score. Depending on the type of premium membership he has and how well he is able to seduce, depends on whether he gets to meet the gorgeous girls of his dreams. More often than not though, he's been catfished. But, after successfully getting his match to agree to meet him five times, we get the trophy, don't hate the player. After all that excitement, Ichiban and Kiryu head back to Akane's house and look around for clues of her whereabouts. Yamai, the guys who broke into Iji's house earlier, show up as they are also looking for Akane. The cabbie from earlier is basically a slave to the clan, and Ichiban manages to talk him into joining the team, and then a big fight breaks out. We win the fight, and head back to Kiryu's hotel. But on the way, we get into a few random fights, and Ichiban levels up to level 10, and we get the trophy, Wandering Dragon. We are then introduced to the Barracudas, who are the worst of the worst, and basically roam the streets of Hawaii at night. If they're out, you make sure you are not. The next day, we then start to experience a lot more of the side content and missions. We come across Crazy Eats, which is basically Crazy Taxi on a bike, but you're delivering food in style. After successfully completing each of the difficulties, we get the trophy 30 mins or it's free. From here we then went doo doo diving and picked an item out of a toilet bowl 
and got the trophy, not a total waste, before then completing our 10th side mission, which bags us the trophy, touching lives. The next trophy was for greeting 50 people in Hawaii. Scattered around the map were hundreds of different people, some with little emojis above their heads. For acknowledging 50 of those, I got the trophy, Spirit of Aloha. We continue with the story now, and we learn that Chitose, the girl who mugged Ichiban, has headed into the Barracuda's turf. In order to get in, we need to find a cop named Roman. We find him in a bar, and he comes across as a bit of a dick. And this leads to us having a fight with him. One that ends with Ichiban saving Eric, the cabbie's life. He's a true bro now. Roman agrees to take us in the following day, so we retire to the hotel for the night. Spoiler fucking warning right now, like bombshell about to be dropped. Thing is, I've got cancer. <gasps> Seems I've got a half a year left, at most. We then crack on with some more side missions, and for completing the 20th side mission, I got the trophy, saving lives. I was then introduced to Sujimon, and honestly, I did nothing else for the next few hours collecting as many Sujimon that I possibly could, battling every person so that my team was strong enough to beat and progress through the Sujimon specific side missions, all in the hope of becoming a Sujimon master. For capturing my 10th Sujimon, I got the trophy Sujimon Snagum. Then, after beating a Sujimon trainer who was stood nearby to a dartboard, and it was the first time I'd seen one in the game, I decided to have a quick blast, and as it was my 10th minigame that I'd played, I got the trophy, having fun yet. I then managed to work my way through the gyms and beat all of the Elite Four. Can't remember what they were actually called, but due to doing this, all the XP in my Sujimon got one of my Sujimon to max level, which bagged me the trophy, Prize Fighter. before then taking on the current Sujimon champion and beating him. I have got to say though, I'm really not doing Sujimon any justice here, because I could have probably made a whole video just about Sujimon, because as much as it was silly, it was absolutely awesome at the same time, and the actual story behind the Sujimon League and how people got into their positions of power etc was absolutely nuts. But, for cementing my place at the top of the Sujimon world, I got the trophy, Suji League Champion. With the Sujimon storyline over and done with, it was time to crack on with the main story again. The party meets up with Roman and he grants us passage into the Barracuda's territory. While here, we meet back up with Chitose, who explains that she's bit off more than she can chew and wants to team up in order to get out. We push on and eventually come to the boss room, where we are up against Dwight, the leader of the Barracudas, who is now also looking for a carne. After a pretty awesome battle, and Eric having a little badass moment, we complete chapter 4 and get the trophy down and out. With the information given to us by Chitose, we learn that Akane had been working at an orphanage, and even they don't know where she's disappeared to. We decide to give them a helping hand and do some little jobs to make things easier for them. We then get introduced to Allo Happy Tour Guides, which is where we can unlock additional jobs or classes that our characters can change into in order to learn a mix of different moves and styles.
Once we'd experienced eight activities, we got the trophy, Allo happy as can be. We then began a couple of our party's drink links. This is where Ichiban will sit down with a party member and learn more about them over a drink. Each character has a number of dialogue options which can raise specific personality traits within Ichiban and after each drink the character will pick up a new perk such as attacking a downed enemy or being able to do a tag attack with Ichiban. From here we then crafted our 10th weapon for the trophy Something From Nothing. Then while grinding out some levels we came across a bonus raid and because this was my 20th weight raid I'd won I also got the trophy Break It Up. Back to the story now and continuing with the little jobs to help the orphanage we end up in the middle of an altercation between some guy and a shop owner. The guy pulls out a gun when all of a sudden this queef burger comes around the corner chatting some religious mumbo jumbo before the guy pulls the trigger but the gun misfires. We go back to the orphanage for a feast but Chitose is being a sneaky little cowbag on the phone to somebody outside. This ends the chapter and we get our next trophy, Miss Gibbons. Then, for the next six to seven hours, I spent all of my time on Dondoka Island. Seriously, this section of the game is huge, and while some people have expressed their love for it, I thought it was pretty meh and dragged on a little bit too long. Dondoka Island is a worn down, lame excuse of a resort, and it's up to Ichiban to help restore it beyond its past glories. To achieve this we have to start off with clearing areas of trash and crafting things in order to begin attracting visitors. It's more complex than I'm making it sound, but it's not like you're about to take on SimCity levels of management. So going through the trophies, first off was for getting to a 3 star resort and being able to use a commercial to attract more visitors, which netted us the trophy Dondoko A Go Go. Then for getting the resort up to 4 stars we netted the trophy basking in glory. We then crafted 100 unique pieces of furniture for the trophy Craftaholic. Then we got the resort up to 5 stars which gave us the trophy Dondoko Denouement, probably said that wrong. And then for welcoming 100 guests to the island we got the trophy Island Hospitality. And then once I hopped on the dolphin in order to return to Hawaii it completed the Dondoko side story, which was my 40th, which also netted me the trophy, Living Your Best Life. Back in Hawaii, we then completed Eric Tomizawa's drink link. Long story short, Eric was framed for a crime that he didn't commit. While he was in the slammer, he couldn't be there for his ex-girlfriend who'd lost their baby. Pretty deep stuff. He got close to her new chap in order to make sure that he wasn't a scumbag. So for completing Eric's drink link, we got the trophy, letting go. From here we continued with some side missions and grinding some levels. After every fight, if the enemy was one that we hadn't faced before, we would get their Sujimon data and they'd be added to the Suji decks. For getting 100 entries into the Suji decks, I earned the trophy Suji Maniac. And with all that grinding I'd been doing, it finally started to pay off, because shortly after the last trophy, Ichiban leveled up to level 30, and I got the trophy Resolute Dragon. Back to the story now and this is where shit really starts to kick off. We find out that the Chinese Mafia are also after Akane, so with the help of Chitose's background we manage to get access to the Chinese Mafia's casino. He's one step ahead of us though and is well aware that Ichiban is hiding out in the car outside. He invites us all in and we eventually begin to rumble. After winning the fight he reveals information to us regarding an overseer and then it becomes apparent that whoever this overseer is has men everywhere, including inside the Chinese Mafia themselves. We learn that the Chinese Mafia guy's son has been kidnapped and we escape into some woodland, but he gets injured. The Yamai clan then show up and start a fire which forces the party to leave Kiryu behind. 
End of the chapter and another trophy. Hinding in plain sight. We learn that Bryce is the overseer, the main guy from the orphanage. You know, the Queefburger from earlier? But that can wait. We need to save Kiryu first. So we head on over to Yamoi's district and get into a massive rumble with Yamoi and all his goons once more. It's then revealed to us that Kiryu is actually being looked after with professional care. We update Yamoi and Kiryu on the situation. Pretty much everybody is searching for Akane because Bryce wants her. And the sole reason why he wants her is because she ran off with the true Sage of Palikana, whereas he is a fake. I just did what the boss asked me to do. Apparently, he used to look up to this guy way back when. Namba and Adachi fly over to Hawaii to help out Ichiban, and because of Kiryu's condition, we decided to send him back to Japan with Namba as his carer. The rest of the party decide it's time to pay Bryce a visit and head back to the orphanage, but Bryce dips and we are left for having to fight Chinese Mafia, Barracudas and now the Palienkas, as everybody is now against us. After a fair few rumbles, we then finish chapter 7 and get the trophy separate ways. Chapter 8 begins with Kiryu and Namba being back in Japan and they decide it's time for Kiryu to write out a bucket list. Shanyi joins us as she has always saw Kiryu as a legend. Controlling Kiryu for the time being, we then begin to slowly chip away at the bucket list while also checking off every memoir marker on the map. Basically, little tidbits from previous Yakuza games and slight nods to some infamous moments. After doing this for quite some time, while also grinding too, we started to tick off a few trophies. First off was for using Pound Mates for the tenth time, which bagged us the trophy Pound for Pound. Then we witnessed Kiryu's 30th memoir for the trophy Precious Memories. We then witnessed Namba's drink link, where he confronts his old boss and tells him to stop being handsy with the females at work, which gets us the trophy squared away. Before then doing Sean He's drink link, where she overcomes a traitor in her clan and reclaims her rightful place at the top for the trophy commanding respect. VTuber. We go to the Seriu clan to inform them of Palikana and their quest to find Akane, and they act surprised, but then a few hours later, using the same VTuber that portrayed Ichiban in a negative light and made him lose his job, they tell the world that Kiryu is alive and kicking, because up until this point, he's considered dead. We head back to Seriu HQ and begin busting heads, and while doing so, we get our first job level up to level 30 for the trophy, Side Hustle. Kiryu then tries to ring the party back in Hawaii to inform them that Seriu clan is also involved, but there is no answer. Just a cutscene of a phone and a puddle of blood. Ending chapter 8 and the trophy, Layered Lies. Chapter 9 has us back in control of Ichiban's party, and we decide to go and speak with Yamoi again and see if we can find any leads to the whereabouts of Akane. We end up speaking with a lady who tells us to meet her at the docks at night. We do so, and we sail off into the sea, when another boat shows up with Akane and Lani, Lani being the true sage of Pelikana. Everybody heads back to the safe house when we find out that E.G., from near the start of the story, has been blackmailing Chitose, and she exposes him, but it's too late. In storm a few thugs, two of the detectives who were arranging transport back to Japan are shot dead, while Akane and Lani are kidnapped. That's all for the, that chapter, and we get the trophy found and lost.
Chapter 10 begins with us back in control of Kiryu's squad, and we start off by grinding some more and working on miscellaneous tasks. Sachan has rejoined the squad and story after her exit following Ichiban's proposal. While grinding, we got our third job level to level 30, so we got the trophy Mad Hustle, before then completing Sachan's drink link, which is heavily focused around why she walked away from Ichiban. This nets us the trophy Missing Words. Story-wise, Kiryu and clan head down to the docks to meet Sarashiro and end up giving him a pasting. At the end of the fight, he asks Kiryu to throw him into the river. This is so he can make his way to Ichiban's place undetected, where Kiryu is staying, and he comes clean about his intentions. He's just playing along until he can find out what the Seriyu clan leader's motive and final plan is. With that, chapter 10 ends and we get the trophy, Dying Breed. Chapter 11 starts with us back in control of Ichiban. Chitose has done a runner and the squad considers their next move. We go to the weapon shop and pay enough money for the final investment which nets us the trophy, investing in the future. Before then heading over to the Yamoi district again because we've heard that Chitose has been spotted going into a bar there. Once we arrive at the bar, all hell breaks loose and we are locked into battle after battle as E.G. goads us from the stage. Chitose appears with a gun to E.G.'s head, demanding answers on where Lani is, but gets her arm slashed by one of E.G.'s goons. We fight some more and manage to defeat the goons before he then pushes Lani strapped to a wheelchair with a bomb in her lap down some stairs. The bomb turns out to just be tear gas and this allows E.G. to escape with Lani once more. The party head back outside Chitose explains everything, all about how she was the VTuber and E.G. was blackmailing her, using her prestigious family history against her. The party then heads back to Yamoi clan territory and we have to fight all of Yamoi's clan who've turned against him because Akane has a bounty on her head. While fighting Yamoi's clan, I noticed a little bit of a difficulty spike, so I decided to start grinding some other areas. While grinding, we happened to come across our 200th Sujimon, which netted us the trophy, Sujimon Sensei. Once we fight through them all, and we make the save, we then witness Ichiban and Akane finally having their son and mother moment, and this brings chapter 11 to a close, and grants us the trophy, Reunion. With chapter 12, you guessed it, we're back with Kiryu again, and with the latest VTuber stream telling everybody he's alive, and with Seriyu clan leaders Abina and Sorashiro set to appear in a new video later that night, we head towards Seriyu HQ once more. We make a couple of pit stops along the way, first collecting Kiryu's 70th memoir for the trophy Abundant Memories, and then building up our relationship and drink links with our new returning character from the prequel, Zeu, probably said that wrong, which bags us the trophy starting fresh. Kiryu and squad then head to the Seriyu clan and fight their way from a shit ton of Yakuza gang members before finally bursting into the chairman's room, only to find out that they are not there as the video that is due to be played that night was a pre-recording. The party walks outside to find loads of civilians that have come along to see if Kiryu being alive is real, which is the end of chapter 12, and we get the trophy, Holding the Line. Back to Ichiban now at the start of chapter 13, and because I thought this was going to be the last chapter where Ichiban was usable, I decided it was time to try and tick off every trophy before continuing with the story. First off, we succeeded on 10 exams at the school for the trophy License to Skill. We then witnessed all of Adachi's drink links for the trophy No Regrets. Before then getting my 7th job level up to level 30 for the trophy Ultimate Hustle. We then managed to find our 30th item in the photo rally for the trophy 
photo hunter. These items were hidden all around Hawaii and some of them were pretty difficult to find. Before catching a glimpse of a beautiful rainbow and taking a photo of it for the trophy somewhere over the rainbow. Speaking of beautiful, we had managed to get the majority of Ichiban's personality traits pretty high at this point and then we met one of the few Hong Kong NPCs. We don't see anything but we can guess what this is and because one of Ichiban's personality traits hit max level, we got the trophy Superhuman. We then played Sicko Snap, which is a mini game where we have to try and take pictures of all these funky looking dudes. And for doing it a total of five times, we got the trophy Sicko Snapper. Story wise, we're hiding out inside a shrine when in walks Junji, who's another returning character from the prequel and he tells us of a ship that is due to dock soon that has come from a small island owned by the Pelicana. And in order to get to the docks, we would have to go through District 5, the Barracuda's Turf. So that's where we're heading next. But before we go head off there, we then complete Chitose's Drink Link for the trophy Rest Assured. And then we visit every Hong Kong NPC around Hawaii and sing a little bit of karaoke to get all of Ichiban's personality traits to the max for the trophy, Metahuman. We finally head into District 5 and we come across a familiar foe, Dwight. He's back again and this time he has Lani and was planning on transporting her on the ship that's just docked there. With a whole bunch of his goons at his aid, this fight was slightly more difficult than the last time we fought him. But thanks to the excessive grinding I'd been doing, and with a lot of my weapons fully upgraded, we still came out victorious, and we saved Lani. With Lani now in our protection, we take her back to Yamoi and Akane, and we learn that Yamoi has a boat that he won in a poker game a while back. And because it was never registered to him, nobody would know it exists and that we can travel back to Japan on it in order to keep Akani and Lani safe. Before the run to the docks, I grinded a little bit in order to get Ichiban's level to 50 for the trophy Apex Dragon. We hop on the boat and of course it was never going to be smooth sailing. The relentless Dwight shows up again and we have to fight him once more. But this time, there is a mahoosive shark in the water that deals additional damage to anybody that has been knocked to the very rear of the ship. Dwight is defeated again, and he jumps on this little boat to try and make an escape. Finally, he meets his fate as another huge shark takes him out and his boat. But he's probably still not dead. We finally arrive at a small island and we learn that Yamoi has confessed to a murder that he committed 30 years ago in order for the police to aid in our safe passage. While discussing the next step, Yamoi runs off and we have to find out where he went. We learn about his backstory and how he fell in love with his ex-Yakuza boss's wife and she asked him to kill her husband so they could be free and run away together. As soon as he did the deed, she then pleaded to the police that he tried to assault her and murdered the boss. So he ran away and went into hiding. We find him at the hospital where the woman who had pushed him to murder and framed him is lying there with Alzheimer's and she asks Yamoi, thinking he is a doctor, if he can turn the heating up because it's cold. He takes his jacket off, wraps it around her and walks away, ending chapter 13 and giving us the trophy, Turning the Tides. It's too warm anyway. Yeah, he must think he's so slick. Well, I think he's slick. 
here. Chapter 14 begins with a short cutscene where Ebina has killed one of his Yakuza men and has beaten Sawashiro to a pulp, explaining how it was his plan all along to kill the Yakuza from within, while aiding Pelicana in getting complete dominance over Japan. We then see another cutscene where both Ichiban's party and Kiryu's party are together and discussing their next move. Ichiban will take his team back to Hawaii and take on Bryce and the Pelicana, while Kiryu will stay in Japan and take on Ebina with the Siryu clan. One quick pit stop before heading to take on Bryce, and that was for Junji's drink link for the trophy Breaking Free. And then we continued until we came face to face with Bryce, the fake sage of Pelicana, and we see his plan in full fruition. All the nuclear waste that the Seryu clan had their Yakuza doing honest work for was all stored under the island and it would have become a national hazard had it continued. We end up fighting a ton of his goons before finally being able to go to town on Bryce himself. This was a tough fight but we eventually defeat him and Chitose exposes both Bryce and herself using the VTuber channel that had been used numerous times throughout the game. We then switch to Kiryu and we get the trophy Funk Goes On for maxing out all of Kiryu's personality traits. Before heading to Millennium Tower to take on Ebina, we speak with Detective Date to witness all of Kiryu's lifelinks and we get a trophy, Renewed Purpose. And then it was just the ending of the game to complete with a few miscellaneous trophies. Although I've warned you at the very start and warned you halfway through, if you've watched up until now, you would think there isn't much left to spoil. Well, you'd be wrong. The mother of all spoilers is coming up, so you've been warned. We come face to face with Ebina and we hear of his pure hatred of all things Yakuza and how he wants nothing more than to see the filth suffer the most unsettling of fates. This fight was another tough one but made a lot easier with the excessive grinding I've been doing throughout the game. We fight, fight and fight until we eventually come out victorious and while Ebina is lying on the ground Kiryu pleads with him to stop hating the Yakuza and give them a chance to atone for the wrongs they've done in the past. Then, Kiryu collapses and becomes unresponsive. Kiryu-san! Stay with us, Kiryu-san! 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 Open your damn eyes, Kiryu! Kiryu Shan! Don't die! You can't die! Kiryu! We then see a cutscene where Ichiban finds E.G. hiding out in Japan and offers a helping hand and promises to be his friend if he does the right thing and hands himself in at the police. Ichiban carries him through a crowd of people, all while lobbing all matter of things at them and one guy even beats the crap out of him too. We then see another cutscene where Kiryu and Sachan look like they're about to make a back up when Ichiban whips out a I love Sachan t-shirt which makes her walk away again and he goes running after her. And then a final cutscene where a woman and a little boy walk into the hospital and go into a hospital room but the bed is empty. We then see a patient be rolled into a treatment room and it's Kiryu. The end, and the trophy, the man who regained his name. With the story complete, I only had three trophies left for the Platinum Trophy. Throughout the game, I've been introduced to two dungeons, Hawaiian Haunting and Ijincho Dungeon. These consisted of a number of floors with increasing difficulty the deeper you went, both ending with a very difficult boss fight. 
I actually failed the boss fights a number of times until I finally was strong enough to take them out. For completing Hawaiian Haunting, I got the trophy Ruffians Beware. And then for completing Ijin Cho Dungeon, I got the trophy Dungeon Sweeper. Now all that was left was to get Ichiban to level 70, and even though I'd used XP boosting gear all the way through, I still had a fair bit of grinding. However, because I'd brought a specific edition of Like a Dragon, I had 5 level up boosts that I hadn't used, so as soon as I hit level 65, I popped them for the trophy Legendary Dragon. And then of course, with that last trophy, I got the beautiful Platinum. Whoop whoop! Now, have I done this game justice? Absolutely fucking not. An epic story with amazing side stories, brilliantly crafted characters, each with unique qualities, and Ichiban, an absolute legend of a main character. This game is so good, I'm probably going to play it again in the future. Anyways, thank you so, so, so much for watching. Consider subscribing for future Platinum Trophy related content and leave a comment down below on which character out of Ichiban and Kiryu do you think is the best. Bye!